Dr. Darius Asemi with GB Wire. Uh, welcome to another episode of Unfiltered uh, on Facebook Live and on our website, gbwire.com, along with my co host, who is sometimes the host, uh, <laughs> Steve Brandau, supervisor, uh, Fresno County. Steve Brandau, good evening, Steve. Hey, Darius. Darius, uh, tonight we have uh, um, an excused absence by uh, Councilman Mike Carbasi. They're in budget hearings at City Hall and they're still going tonight. He was hoping to be done this afternoon, but he's still going tonight into the evening. So uh, I think we're gonna give him an excused absence. That sounds good, Steve. But we've got a, a great show for you tonight. We're gonna talk about ghost guns, gun control, US Senate gun deal, uh, including uh, what uh, uh, Republican leader, Senate leader Mitch McConnell came out a couple hours ago in support of. Uh, then we're going to talk about the mayor, uh, uh, mayor and his position on, on gun control. That's Mayor Dyer. And then uh, family pride night at the Chaffee uh, Zoo. Uh, Steve, you have some information on that. And then finally, we're going to talk about the, the new tax. Actually, it's an existing tax on transportation. It's a half cent sales tax on, tr on transportation that we've been paying for 30 some odd years. It expires in 2026. Steve has a lot of information on that. We're gonna cover that and uh, briefly, and, and, and sometime in the next uh, few weeks, we'll have a more enhanced episode just on the transportation tax. We have a couple of experts locally, uh, Fresno County, from Fresno County, the Fresno County Transportation Authority, we hope, um, and other folks uh, about the tax, how the money's been spent, uh, Etc. But before uh, we get started, let's get a brief uh, news brief news update from uh, Veronique. Thanks, Darius. Trailblazing Fresno Fire Chief Carrie Donis says she will retire in 2023 after nine years in the post. Under her leadership, the fire department has significantly increased staffing. Democrats passed a California state budget ahead of Wednesday's deadline, but Governor Gavin Newsom worries that it is financially irresponsible, and columnist Dan Walters calls it a sham. Heading to the Central Coast next week, GV Wire has what you need to know about road and bridge projects that might affect your travel. Back to you, Darius. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, V, for uh, Veronique, for that. Uh, let, let's put up, Steve, if it's okay with you, should we put up the poll that uh, GV Wire did on Facebook? Uh, yeah, on, I think we, can you give me one minute to talk about Measure C so yes. when, when people will know what the poll yes, is really about? So Please. this is an issue that we've talked about a couple of times. It's coming up. Some people want it to come on the November ballot. Other people want to wait two years. And we can go into that. We can have a whole show about that. But um, what Measure C is, Darius, for the unfiltered viewers, is it is a half cent sales tax that is to be renewed. And its primary, primary objective is to fix the roads in Fresno County. It only is a tax for residents of Fresno County. It's paid by everybody. So uh, the rural, you know, rural folks and city folks alike have to pay it. It's a sales tax. Anything you buy, a half a cent. And historically, it's gone predominantly to roads, but it does include some things like bicycle lanes and trails and sidewalks and some of these other things as well. There's a huge debate brewing about that. Uh, and, and we can get into that in more detail either now or at another time. But what we're wanting to know it on Unfiltered is what do the unfiltered viewers think about this road tax? Do we want to continue um, maintaining and building our roads in Fresno County. Uh, some of the big projects, Darius, that everybody knows about were all Major C funded, like um, 168 uh, into Clovis and now going east of Clovis. 180, um, not too long ago, basically stopped at, at uh, uh, Clovis Avenue. Now it goes all the way up into the foothills. Um, and also 41 in the historical past, when I grew up, 41 stopped at Bullard, and now that we know that uh, 41 goes all the way, um, you know, up the mountain. So, you know, a lot of these humongous projects that have made our life a lot easier in the community um, are up for renewal. And so it's, it's going to be interesting in the 
weeks and months ahead, how the sides are taken. There's there's pros and cons, of course. Everybody has their own views. And so we've done a poll and you want to show that poll right now from um, unfiltered viewers. Is that correct? Yeah, let's let's uh, put that poll uh, poll results up. That's That's been up for how long now? I think five days. So the money from the new Measure C, how should it be spent? So about 46%, almost 47% of folks want a fourth lane on 41. But really road repair, repairing our roads is number one at 73%. More bicycle paths is uh, almost 7%. And uh, more mass transit is about 20%. Uh, the number of people that took this poll was how many? Uh, two? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I, I think the number of people that took this poll was uh, about 30. Uh, that's what I'm told. And uh, more information to come in, in, in the following weeks. But th the new Measure C, and we can go back to it at the end, Steve, it will generate about $7 billion in sales tax revenue. Is that correct? Is that a correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of money. Of course, it's over a long period of time. And when we have a full show on this, um, I'd like to bring on a consultant that can talk about. Uh, so you gave four categories in the GV wire poll, uh, but the consultant did a lot more and, and hit thousands of people and gave a lot more opportunities for people to say what's valuable. But what's funny, Darius, is even though GV wire did a very unscientific poll and just asked the viewership, a lot of the numbers are very similar. And that's what cracks me up. Most people want to continue to use the money to build roads and streets. But right now on Facebook Live, we have Inga who says no more taxes. And we have Robert Phelan who says the closest thing uh, to eternal life is a temporary tax. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, these are both great responses and they both illustrate, you know, people have a lot of feelings, you know, the economy uh, going south under the Biden administration, uh, tanking on a daily basis <laughs> under the dynamic leadership of President Biden, you know, has a lot of people worried about, you know, these continuing taxes. So, you know, it's going to be a big debate that we have between here and November. Yeah, and we'll we'll have a full on session on Measure C. So we don't want to don't want to take a lot of time, but we'll have the experts. We talked about uh, the pr transportation issues about a year ago on at Unfiltered. Uh, we'll bring some of those experts plus the person that Steve is talking about, the um, consultant. So you, the unfiltered audience will be fully aware of the options in front of us, the amount of money we're talking about. The, the, to Inga's point, uh, the half cent sales tax already exists. Yeah. So the, remember, uh, if you're a city of Fresno resident, you're paying three eighths of a cent more in sales tax starting July 1 of last year for everything you purchase in the city of Fresno. Uh, that money goes to parks for the city of Fresno alone. Measure C is a half cent sales tax, as Steve alluded to, that expires in uh, uh, end of 2026. So we have several tries to get it renewed. I know Steve wants to get it done this year. Uh, and I want to make sure that there is enough funds uh, for all the right projects. So we'll, we'll debate that yeah. uh, in, in an upcoming. It sounds like Steve wants to debate some of it right now. Well, it's just that um, I'm a lot like Inga and Robert, you know, um, taxes are a, a big pain. Here's one thing about this tax compared to other taxes. These taxes are local. We taxing ourselves actually, and they stay local. We don't have to share this with uh, um, crazy yeah. stuff up and down the state that we disagree with. Unlike a lot of other taxes where we are spending our money on things we don't even believe in. This will be a tax that we vote on ourselves if we do, kind of like Measure Z uh, last week, uh, Measure Z passed, and that is, goes directly to the zoo. And so, you know, it would be a tax that we vote on ourselves, but it's controlled for ourselves and all the money stays local. So, I mean, I, and to Inga's point, taxes suck. But if you are to have taxes, I think this is really the best way to do it, local control over the tax dollars. So that's, you know, that's one thing and we can flesh that out later, even more. That, that sounds good, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna put my final two cents on that. Um, 
who controls where where the, where the money should go. The seven billion obviously is important. Uh, so we we will educate the unfiltered audience what options are on the table, what the vote looks like, who is making those decisions right now on your behalf on how the money should get spent. The Measure C Committee or whoever is, uh, is on, uh, whoever that those folks are, Fresno County Transportation Authority, Fresno Council of Governments, et cetera. We'll bring the experts so the unfiltered audience will be fully uh, educated uh, on this issue. Please uh, pass the word once, once we have a date set We'll let everybody know uh, a few days ahead of time uh, once we got everybody confirmed. Uh, last item, Inga, doesn't the huge federal transportation infrastructure bill pay for roads? Uh, yes, it does. It's not enough to take care of all of our issues. And remember, so many of these uh, federal and state uh, dollars, grant dollars, have a local match. So if you don't have local dollars, we can't get the federal federal money. Don't uh, don't blame the messenger or don't shoot the messenger, uh, but that's how a lot of these are set up. Okay, with that, uh, Steve, shall we dive into ghost guns? What is a ghost gun, by the way? You want to dive into that, Steve? Yeah, ghost guns. Ghost and, guns. You know, and the breaking news, of course, is they've struck a bipartisan deal in the Senate. Um, the House has always, you know, been willing to do that. The House is strongly controlled by the Democrats until November. But right now, the Senate is, you know, just right at 50-50. And so the Democrats have needed 10 Republicans to cross over and support um, a bipartisan bill. And so apparently today they've announced, Mitch McConnell announced that those 10 votes are there. And so I, I imagine that a, uh, a bipartisan uh, gun control bill will be passing uh, the House and the Senate signed by President Biden probably soon within a matter of a week or so, you know, maybe even sooner. And so, um, yeah, it's been interesting to watch, you know, and it's been painful to watch, you know, we have these mass shootings. At the same time, Darius, for me, um, these mass shootings are very small number of incidents in nature. And we're gonna spend a lot of energy and time and resources on a very small number of incidents. Well, regular crimes, like say, for instance, we had the Evaldi shooting uh, three weeks ago in Texas. We also had the uh, shooting um, in Buffalo, and we've had several shootings already this year, <laughs> too many. But almost on a weekly basis, ghost guns and other types of weapons are used commonly on the streets of our major cities all across the nation. We know that locally, uh, gun uh, crimes have gone down in the last year. Uh, Mayor Dyer, uh, Chief Balderrama have both talked about that on the program, which I think is, is great for our local community. But many communities have an ongoing crisis with guns. Uh, you know, none, none of them scream louder than Chicago, right? Which is supposed to be a gun-free zone. So, you know, we're spending a lot of time and resources on, a, on, a, on incidents that are tragic and um, just defy our ability to figure them out. Uh, and yet, I'm not sure that all of those are gonna take care of the weekly crimes that we see in our major cities across the country. So I've got concerns about it still. It's just in my mind, Darius, it's like the homelessness thing. You know, we're spending, you know, per capita, so much money on every single homeless person. I mean, it's thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year or more on, individual homeless people. And in all reality, when we look at what's happening in our economy right now, you have to ask yourself, you know, is it worth it, all of this money? And so, um, you know, I've got a lot of concerns about these issues. No, good point, uh, Steve. Uh, so what is a ghost gun, right? It doesn't have a serial number and it could be assemb assembled at home or manufactured at home some uh, some uh, 3D printing or use of polymers, uh, but basically it's a gun that cannot be uh, uh, tracked or traced down. And we don't know how many we have uh, in our country. There is a, what was the number we came up with a couple of weeks ago was that we had, there's like 400 million registered guns uh, in the country, uh, legal, legally registered guns. Uh, but the number uh, 
of guns to, uh, according to some estimates, is as high as one billion. You know, uh, Darius, we've had um, Chief Balderrama on the show. He's talked about ghost guns on the show. Uh, District Attorney Lisa Smitkamp has talked about ghost guns on the show. Mayor Dyer um, has talked about ghost guns in the show. He talked to the media about that as well. On the streets of Fresno, um, Chief Balderrama says that about 20% of our gun crimes are committed by a gun, uh, are, are committed by a person. I better clear that up with my conservative friends right there. The crimes are committed by a person using a ghost gun, which was never bought at a sporting goods store. None of that stuff ever happened. Somebody assembled a gun from parts, maybe did some 3D printing in some cases, but assembled these guns and they just did it in their own garage. And that's why they're called ghost guns. They're not trackable, traceable. We don't know where they came from. We don't know who, nobody purchased them. And so um, it's very difficult. So even locally in the city of Fresno, our police chief is saying that 20% of our gun crimes uh, include ghost guns. Yeah, that's, that's an incre incredible number. Um, how many guns are actually out there that uh, nobody knows? Uh, who, who, who they belong to. Yeah, the chief uh, made, that was an interesting statement by the chief. Our uh, mayor, Mayor Dyer also made a statement about responsible gun control. And if you could put that image, image up uh, of, uh, of our mayor, uh, he was on CNN, uh, uh, I think it was last week, calling for, uh, let me just make sure I get the facts straight, uh, background checks. Um, Sensible gun control measures, which have, uh, I think he asked for, he, he said he would support a, a, a minimal uh, background check, right, uh, for folks that uh, want to acquire guns. I don't think he talked about age of folks. Uh, background, he urged Senate to pass background check bills. Right. Um, so Darius, if you think of the Evaldi shooting and some of these tragedies that every, you know, every American should be very upset that these things are going on in our society. Now, the question is, how do you fix them? How do you address them? You know, we have, we've had local things happen that, you know, there's, it's a very complex situation. There's not one cure-all, right? But um, so, you know, this, the government wants to pass in this moment of emotion and a passion. They say now's the time to pass sensible gun control. The, tr the key word there is sensible because even you, even between you and I, we see, we see much alike in this world, but we would have a debate among ourselves. That's just two people would have a debate on what is sensible. Now you include many representatives that represent hundreds of thousands of people in these different states and every place is a little bit different and so a lot of people think well why should I pay that price of what's going on in that state in that part of the world and so this definition of sensible is I think where people get into trouble like what I found out today and quite honestly Darius I, I haven't had time since um, Mitch McConnell made his announcement about two and a half hours ago I don't know every single thing that's in this bill. My understanding is it's about the ghost guns. It's about um, the background checks. I don't think it includes raising the age to buy a gun. I think that's off the table. I think it's been taken off the table. I'd be surprised if that makes its way back on the table. So, but everybody has their different definition of what is sensible, right? And so I think that's why uh, Dyer got some criticism on this. And then the fact that you know, he uh, he did it on CNN, right? And and I've right. seen his response. I've seen his statement. He might not be that much different than the average unfiltered viewer uh, and their views on this issue. Um, but, uh, you know, you always take a little bit of heat when you uh, cross over and join with the other side. Sometimes it's the right thing to do, irregardless of the political pain to yourself. And I face that myself, and I know what that's like, and it's no fun. And I'm not saying that the mayor was right or wrong. I think in the circles that I travel with, I think most of them were criticizing that he was on CNN, right? 
rather than Fox News. And so, you know, there's always different, you know, perspectives of this deal. A um, couple of the uh, quotes from the mayor, mayor, our mayor Dyer, as a former police chief, I spent far too many nights in hospitals with families who were grieving the potential loss of their children. And we say, I said, we must do something then. The extremist view that occur from the left to the right are creating a paralysis in our country that is preventing us from doing the right thing. So, and, and going back to uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, so there's you know a lot of debate that this is an election year and uh, there's the mood in the country is to do some kind of a, have some kind of a background check or some kind of a, some measures uh, for, for gun control. I, and I haven't uh, seen that either. Uh, they're hoping to pass this and have the president sign it by July 4th. Um, anyhow. You know, amazing. Darius, yeah. many conservatives and Republicans, and I can speak best to that view, to that view. And I've got a lot of liberal friends and Democrat friends. We've had, you know, vibrant debate over this issue over the years. But uh, there's a lot of Republicans out there that want something to be done and they know something needs to be done. But what they're what they're afraid of with good measure is government always has a way of going way overboard um, and trying to kill a fly with a sledgehammer. You're talking like the stimulus and now the interest rate hikes that's coming. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> Absolutely. hundred percent. Let me tell you what kills people. Yeah. Inflation kills people. So, you know, yeah. there's all kinds of things that kill, kills people. So, um, but our big, one of our big problems is we've never come to a, a level of trust and commitment to each other as Americans that says, you know, if we give a little bit, what will you give? If we give a little bit, what securities you, will you give for rightful gun owners? When people criticize the NRA, I see the NRA as a fantastic player. I've seen them change over the years, but they want, they want key protections. And right now, it's difficult to get those protections. And without those protections for great gun owners like myself and yourself, then it makes us nervous as we enter into even more agreements with people to give up more of our rights, right? And so that's, the, you know, that's been a problem. Like right now, I don't know, you know, this thing's going to happen because everybody's got emotional um, engagement right now. But one thing can lead to another. We've seen it happen before. And some of us are nervous that that is always right around the next corner, is that some other part of our right to bear arms will be taken from us. And, you know, finally, Darius, what I want to say on this issue is it's hilarious to me that we're taking, we're taking, we're criticizing guns and we're, quote, we want to get rid of these guns in America. But what do we want to send to Ukraine? We want more guns. These people need more guns, you know? So there's a lot of um, psychological confusion that we create. You know, Joe Biden is going to say, we need to give Zelensky more guns today. We need to take more guns from um, law-abiding citizens in the United States. The whole thing just doesn't make sense. It's very erratic. No, I get that. The same thing goes for oil, right? We're not, we're not, expanding oil drilling uh, and on U.S. property, uh, but we know that we need more oil production to bring the price of oil down. And we're trying to figure out how to get oil and natural gas to Europe uh, in, in a hurried up fashion, even though we, President Biden killed the Keystone Pipeline contract the first day he got in, in office. Robert Phelan has got some great comments. I'm going to read uh, one of these out loud. California's law banning the sale of semi-automatic center-fired rifles to individuals under 21 was declared unconstitutional by a panel of federal appeals judges on Wednesday. In a two-to-one panel ruling, the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that California's laws, law violated the Second Amendment, which protects an individual's right to own a firearm. Newsom signed the, the law, Senate Bill 61, in 2019, prohibiting the sale of a semi-automatic rifle to a person under 21, unless they're in a law enforcement or a member of the military. I guess this came from the Center Square, uh, published May May 12, 2022. Anyhow, um, 
Yeah. And so, you know, in the heat of the moment, we've had a smattering of these um, mass shootings. And in the heat of the moment, we're going back on decisions that have been made for a long time. Now, sometimes that needs to take place. Um, I've always felt that the NRA and other responsible gun owners not only deserve a right at the table, if you let them, they will bring to the table very valuable things that need to be updated in this arena. But right now, what we have is people who are very unknowledgeable about guns. And one of them is President Biden. A couple of weeks ago, he got very confused about talking about guns, which is not you know, surprising because he gets very confused about almost everything but he got very confused about talking about guns and he started talking about a nine millimeter will blow the lungs out of your body. And just stupid, insane things is one of the reasons why people are very nervous about moving forward under this anti-gun agenda. And um, so, you know, that's, you know, that's a part of the conversation as well. I think you're on mute, Darius. Thank you. Sorry about that. Anything else on guns before we go to our, um, well, we covered transportation tax. Let me go back to it for a minute. Anything else on guns? Anybody want to cover, including you, Steve? No, you know, I just think that in the upcoming weeks, we'll probably have to include this in even more shows, you know, on Unfiltered. And, um, and you know, I, I am one of those ones. Mark me down, Darius. It's one of those ones that is um, nervous about government overreach. To me, it sounds crazy in the light of one of the tragedies that we've seen recently, but to me, a bigger threat to my security is not the random shooter. I don't like that person. I want them either death penalty or behind bars for life. In, in my best, in my world, somebody shoots them dead before the tragedy ever starts. But a bigger threat to me, in my mind, is the government of the United States of America overreacting and, um, and treading upon my individual rights. Well, you got several folks start supporting what you're just saying, including uh, Inga, the bill is overreach. Yeah, we, you know, unfortunately, there's so many things we, we get we don't get right in our country and we have to wait for a bridge to fail before we you know start doing bridge repairs and so how do we have gun rights about make sure folks that are mentally ill don't have access to guns especially assault, assault rifles i don't want honestly i don't want somebody that's mentally ill and i know that's a vague definition who's going to determine that etc to have access to guns, especially assault, assault semi-automatic or machine guns, I mean, automatic assault rifles. Uh, but we had that a great panel, when was that? A couple of weeks ago uh, that, you know, we debated this, um, two psychologists, one local, one uh, national, and our, and our council members. So we probably have to end up uh, bringing them back. Uh, okay, we're gonna move over to, um uh, the pride family pride night at uh, chaffee uh zoo yeah darius and this is one that i put on our um, agenda for conversation tonight i would love to hear um from the facebook live audience uh that's watching unfiltered uh, right now maybe we can work in some of their comments or questions as well but surprisingly enough and we i've got a lot on my plate these days at the county uh, we're about to enter into part of our budget. Um, uh, we do our more thorough budget in the early fall, but um, we begin those conversations. Now, there's a lot of stuff I should be talking about, but I am getting a lot of people that are interested in calling me. At least I've got a lot of phone calls and emails about a couple things. One of them, it started last week when there was a flag raising at uh, Fresno City Hall, and it was for the um, pride flag. And it's the second year they've done that. It didn't start this year. They started it last year. Um, and Mayor Dyer um, was originally against that and then became for it. And then um, 
this last week, I guess there was a lot of Christians were upset about a prayer that was prayed there. I started hearing about that. But then really quickly on the heels of that came this announcement that the Fresno Chaffee Zoo was going to hold an event with EOC as the host to um, have drag queens interact with children. And I've tried to get some more information than that. I've, I've, I've really hit a, a tough road trying to find out in the last 24 hours. I started yesterday trying to get a little bit more information about that. And, and, and part of the, um, you know, people's anger about this is children. And what I'm hearing is, you know, children should be off limits to these conversations. And, and adults are a different story. What adults want to do and the privacy on their own home and all of these things. We've debated this in the United States of America. We try to allow uh, adults to do whatever they want to do as long as it's within the confines of the law. But to include children and to take drag queens out to the zoo. Now, who loves to go to the zoo? I love the zoo, but whenever I visit the zoo, I see young families with small children. Mommy, mommy, look at the anteater. I've never seen an anteater before. That is a beautiful experience, and that is a beautiful zoo. Now, to take and put drag queens at the zoo and to have a performance by drag queens, and I know we're in the middle of Pride Month, by the way, and I'm not against all these pride events, but if you think about having drag queens at the zoo and you have the small children there, in my mind, you begin to create confusion, unnecessary confusion and curiosity in children. And I don't think that's an acceptable thing. So I have an issue with it. I don't have any responsibility over it. People think because it's called, you know, Fresno County Zoo or the Fresno County Chaffee Zoo or the EOC that I've got a lot to do with. I think maybe that's why some of them are reaching out to me. But I'm just a citizen in this regard. As a matter of fact, I don't even have children. But I'm concerned for the sexualization at an early age of anybody. And we're seeing a lot of the ramifications of that in the United States of America, including a higher suicide rate among those confused teens and adolescents. So it's a, it is a big deal. It might say, why is Unfiltered even talking about this? People have the right to do whatever they want to do. Yes. But what about children? I think we need to start protecting those children more, just like we're trying our best to do in the school situations. So I don't know what your thoughts are, Darius, but uh, you know we are presenting a flyer right here on the screen right now. There's two versions of it. One of them, one of the flyers talks about the drag queens, a chance for, to meet the drag queen. Well, you know, I don't think that you're gonna see unclothed people there doing really gross stuff in front of these children, but more than likely you're gonna see these fantasy figures. We have, there's images that's hap happening all across the country now. They engage the children, they pass out things, the children are happy, but that's where the, the sexual confusion and sexual curiosity starts happening at an age that's way too early. That's my problem with this event at Fresno Chappie Zoo. Uh, Inga had a good point. What's, uh, she said, uh, and I quote, what's wrong with just plain family, family night? So no, don't be divisive. Just have a family night uh, at the zoo uh, instead of, a, you know. So, I, you know, I don't have kids. Uh, I've been to this zoo, I think, uh, once or twice. We used to have a Granville Homes event and uh, around Christmas, celebrate the lights. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I don't have all the facts or the details. So it's a, it's a, it's a drag queen night at the zoo. Is that what you're saying, Steve? It's, it's on the flyer. It just basically says, um, Pride Night, Family Pride Night at uh, the Fresno Chappie Zoo, hosted by the EOC. And further down in the flyer, it talks about um, a drag queen performance and a chance to meet the queens at the event after the performance is over. And so, um, you know, it's just 
to me, it's just problematic for the reasons I talked about. It's just, yeah. it's, it's, these kids are too young. By the way, Darius, I try to be even handed about this. I don't think anybody should be out talking about anything sexual, even I by implication, yeah. even by yeah. implication yeah. with children, LGBTQ or any other group. So in other words, don't have porn stars showing up at the zoo. Yeah. 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 And the, I agree. The zoo is a very, should be a very safe environment for kids. No sexual con. Uh, yeah, I've, 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 I feel the same way. No sexual connotations. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, sounds like, okay. Oh, Robert Phelan. Uh, young children should learn their one, two, threes and ABCs, not the birds and bees. Bingo. Exactly. Yeah. The birds and the bees need to be taught at home. And hopefully when at the age, appropriate age, when a child can even understand the concept right? We have a lot of young children now being over-sexualized and people are trying to make commitments about their entire future by the time that they're five, six, or seven years old. You know, if a little girl wants to play with trucks or a little boy wants to play with dolls, there are those with an agenda that want to say, well, you're supposed to be this or you're supposed to be that, and we're going to start you on a pathway at age seven and we're going to start dealing with your psychology and your biology, and we're going to get you into a transitional phase. And it's just really, to me, it's just crazy that we're doing that in this country. No, I, I, I see what you're, yeah. Uh, I see what you're saying. I, we just got a text from um, Mike, uh, who can't come again. I think he's, he's stuck at uh, Fresno City Hall. Uh, about but uh, there's June is uh, this Sunday is Juneteenth right uh, Juneteenth day this Sunday uh, so we may be doing a show uh, upcoming show and uh, on unfiltered uh, to cover that or at least part of a show okay um, if there's nothing else on this topic we're gonna we're going to um, uh, Robert, actually, he's got a couple of other comments. Uh, At the Zoo song by Simon and Garfunkel. I'm not sure what song he's referring to. And um, Inga, Inga's co other comment is, it's uh, child abuse and criminal to do this to kids. Well, this is going to get coverage over the coming days. I'm sure GB Wire will be doing an article. This was what night? Uh, this is on June 24th, so it's a week from this Friday. And, um, you know, I've just received a number of calls. There's been a lot of conversations had about this in the last uh, 24, 36 hours. And I know I've talked with many others who've heard about this. They don't, it's unclear in their mind what's happening. They want to know if I can stop it and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if even by next Tuesday's unfiltered show, if there's been more conversation had on this issue. And I think it should be had on this issue. Yeah. Uh, Robert said federal holiday on Monday, uh, on Monday for June, June 10th. Yes. So Mike just uh, texted us about uh, Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Yeah. Ju yeah. Juneteenth is now a federally recognized holiday. Thanks Robert for reminding me of that. Uh, Fresno County employees get the day off now. It, you know, uh, it is a, a, a holiday that never existed uh, when I was growing up, but now it does. And so, you know, things change and it is a recognition of the, um, of all of the things that the um, African-American community have done in um, the history of our country. And so, you know, it's something that's uh, uh, taken root as far as more and more people seem to celebrate it every year. And now it's a federally, federally recognized holiday. And so- okay. It is interesting to know that that's happening. On Monday. Uh, okay, so let's wrap up in the next few minutes on uh, Measure C. We're going to go back to that briefly. Um, the Let's put up slide uh, 22 and 23. This is on, a, our, on our existing 
uh, revenue source uh, for, for Measure C, here it is. I don't know if the audience can see it. This is the one that expires. This was a 20 year one expires uh, in 20, well, it says 2027, I believe it's end of 26. Well, 20, yeah, it's end of 26. And so we have 2022 and 2024 uh, are two different opportunities to continue this if the community wants to continue it. Why do, you, why do you think it should go now and not be debated further and get the whole community on board? I understand there is a committee right now that very few people know uh, is on this committee and they're making most of the decisions. Is that correct, Steve? It's, a, it's not a small committee. It's quite possibly the biggest committee I've ever seen in my political life. I think there's 37 members to the committee. Okay. Um, each one of those represents different portions of um, the community. So there's all kinds of community voices and great overlap. And there's people pro and con that are on the committee. And every one of them has been given lots. There's been, I can't remember the other day, Darius, I heard, I think over 60 meetings on this single topic. Wow. You know, now what always happens is people go, well, I've never heard of it before. Well, you need to cut back a little bit on Netflix, maybe. But this stuff's <laughs> happening all the time. There's been a lot of outreach. Yeah. Okay. Uh, stay tuned, folks. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a nice debate on your half cent sales tax dollars and how it should get spent or how it's proposed to be getting spent and what you can do to influence that decision. Um, Steve? Yeah, Daria. So in my closing comments, and I look forward to that full show, and I think everything that we chatted about tonight, the Chappie Zoo, um, the um, gun uh, control measures that have, are now seem like they'll be passed by uh, within a week, all of these issues, I think, are one of those issues that we're going to continually cover here on um, Unfiltered, as well as Measure C. We're, you and I have talked about putting together a robust a show about that. We'll have the experts on rather than just you and I giving our viewpoints, right? But yes. um, but one thing that I would like to say is, you know, tomorrow we are going to, uh, the word on the street is that tomorrow that the uh, uh, Fed is going to raise interest rates um, by another three quarters uh, or 75 percentage points, and maybe even a hundred is what I heard late today. And, you know, people just need to know that the wheels are coming off the off of the bus, and uh, and and people really wonder what does that mean. And and I did get I did not get the graphic in time to the team tonight for to put on unfiltered for my closing comments. But if you would have bought a house, a four hundred thousand dollar house in January, your monthly payment might have been something like around um, nineteen hundred dollars. A lot of money. The interest rate was just under or just over 3%. It was right around basically 3%. Last week, the interest rate went up to just over 6%. If you buy that same house five months later, your bill is about $700 a month more. And again, I don't have the graphic in front of me. I'll try and have it maybe by next week. But it is really, it's going to slow down the economy, which of course is part of the goal. But we've already seen layoffs begin uh, as a result of this in some sectors, Darius, in your sector, for instance, in the in the housing sector, you, we've already seen some layoffs begin. And so, you know, the it, it's it's wonderful to talk about these other issues, but I'll tell you, this economy and what's happening in our economy, I think very quickly needs to be a, a, a show, an entire show, um, because I'm not convinced that the federal government under the Biden administration know the first thing about what's happening out on the street. The <clears throat> Biden administration, no, you're right. The wheels are falling off the bus. We're going to be in for a rude awakening. The only way government knows how to curb inflation is to force our economy into a recession. Uh, they spent too much money on stimulus, $1.9 trillion. We heard that uh, on this show, you heard that the, the uh, shortfall for uh, wages last year was $250 billion, and government spends 1.9 trillion in, in stimulus money. 
Well, that money is making itself through the, the, you know, the economy. And we have, uh, because of the pandemic and then also uh, the Ukraine war, we have supply chain disruption. So supply is limited and, and actually not keeping up with existing demand, uh, pre-pandemic demand. And now you have, you've added several trillion dollars, not all of it under Biden, but some under uh, the Trump administration, several trillion dollars of, Trump, uh, of stimulus money. And that money is just gonna, it's creating the, uh, the, the demand and the inflation when you, when you print that, that kind of money in, into the economy and add it into the economy. So Biden administration, in my opinion, is uh, in a pickle because they want economy to be humming in 2024. They also know that inflation needs to be under control by 2024. And I believe it's gonna take a lot more effort to get inflation under control. Interest rates are gonna to have to go up painfully. Uh, Steve is right, Fed funds rate, it will go up between 75 and 100 basis points tomorrow and maybe further in July. Um, the news about the 8.3% uh, inflation fr uh, last Friday morning was, was not healthy for where we're headed. Uh, and of course, you know, when we see oil prices dip below 100 bucks quickly, that's when we know inflation is on its way to be tamed. But we don't see that getting there anytime soon, unless Saudi Arabia pumps out more oil, unless there's an <clears throat> Iran nuclear deal to get more oil out, and unless we have the appetite to buy oil from Venezuela. Out, outside of those uh, anomalies, which none of those I think are going to happen, uh, um, Oil prices will, will remain inflated, which means uh, there's going to be energy cost to every everything we buy. All the all, everything sh being shipped or manufactured, which is you know uses energy, is going to have a higher price tag to it. I can tell you, inflation and in, in housing is incredible. Cost of housing materials, except lumber, are going up on a weekly basis. Mainly, they're because of the energy surcharge. So, so Steve, you're exactly right. We should do a show. Again, we did one last year. We should do a show on the economy and on inflation. Uh, again, Biden administration wants the economy to be humming by 2024, uh, but also having uh, inflation under control by 2024. And that's going to be very, very difficult to pull off. Uh, the only way I see that is massive interest rate hikes to get us, into, get us into a massive recession next year and bring us out of a recession in 24. And government, our government and the Federal Reserve can't work that fast. And the impacts of rate hikes don't get translated down immediately on, on a day-to-day on a, on, on -day -day purchase of goods and services. They, uh, you mentioned the mortgage cost is, has gone up substantially, which is exactly right. Uh, starting tomorrow, it's 75, maybe 100 basis points. That means credit card interest rates are going are gonna to start going up. Cost of bit cost to businesses will go up uh, starting tomorrow. And meanwhile, the stock market's plummet plummeting. So you know, or plunging. I, what I would like to see us have on a show is maybe somebody Darius who can talk about how to protect your assets uh, during a, a a crash slash recession, and then also you know on the housing side, you know. What's going to happen to your house? One thing that I've been trying to determine in my own personal research is, and it's very selfish, what happens to the price, the value of my home? And I've, I've heard uh, pros and cons. I've heard people take both sides, uh, but maybe we'll just leave that right there as a cliffhanger and we can talk about that and come, uh, come back and talk about that on Unfiltered and do an entire show about inflation and how it impacts uh, the cost at, for food, housing, gas, and then also uh, what happens as the Fed, or excuse me, the government tries to address this out of control uh, inflation. You know, they have to take some extreme measures, which you're, is what you're talking about, to do that. And those extreme measures are very painful. We're not a, we're not a nation that enjoys pain. We enjoy comfort. So, um, you know, it's going to be some tough road ahead, I think. You're, you're exactly right. And we uh, in the home building industry, uh, I, well, I can tell you this, our company is bracing for a very uncomfortable 2023. Right. Uh, home builders are, are at least, I mean, well, let, my forecast is home builders are not going to be in a good position uh, next year. It's going to be some, it's going to be painful. 
uh, but uh, we'll we'll see. It's, that sounds like uh, two fascinating shows. One on economy and inflation. And Steve, that's a great idea. How to protect your uh, investment. And then a second show on uh, transportation tax dollars. How it's going to get spent. When should that vote be? Whether it should be on a ballot uh, for this November or November of uh, 24, and maybe even November of 26 as as a final uh, opportunity. But uh, the, the two upcoming uh, great shows. Uh, we get we got a lot of great topics, uh, ideas uh, by our audience. Um, so we'll we'll hope hope to see everybody um, back and unfiltered next Tuesday. Uh, Steve, you have any other final comments? No, that's it. Thanks okay. everybody for tuning in. Thanks right. for the comments on Facebook Live, and we can always get a hold of uh, you. Can always get a hold of us if you have some good ideas for future shows. Thank you, everybody. Good night and see you all next week.